Hey guys, uh, so we're doing this again, and this is one that we've been working uh, a while towards. It's been my fault that we've been delayed a little bit because I, I went away to the island, but finally Jade and I are doing another conversation video, and this will be the longest one yet because we took all of your guys' questions and we're really excited to uh, answer them, and Jade, it's really fun to be able to do this with you again. Um, this is the closest the camera's ever been in my perspective, but I knew that I was not going to be able to stand for this entire thing, so I'm going to be sitting comfortably, because I imagine that my legs would get numb after all the... <laughs> this is... <laughs> Alright, so I guess we'll, if you want, you and I can go back and forth with the questions. I'll say one, like we got our document here, so we'll just go through it and I'll say one, and if you want to say the next one, we'll just go back and forth. Alright. Alright, so I guess the first one here is... I will, uh, this one's from Cosner. Uh, I want both of y'all to talk about your feelings about Lucifer, how he was so evil, serious, and threatening in season five, and then turned to a jokey schmuck, low life, from season eleven to fourteen. In my opinion, what are your thoughts? I, I have a lot of uh, thoughts. <laughs> oh, I, I was gonna say, ever since you told me the line about Lucifer being the herpes of Supernatural, I've used that in several <laughs> conversations with people about it because that's. That was a nail on the head describing his character. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the best one. And I'll, I, I thought he was okay in season 11. I actually liked how he was much more conniving and how he got beaten really, really easily uh, mm -hmm. in season 11. However, that was a mistake because afterwards they tried to make him the villain in season 13 and kind of 12. And it was a bad idea because you had just seen him be beaten. Yeah. Like, so nonchalantly that you're like, I understand you're trying to make this guy the villain again, but we've seen him be beaten quite easily. And we saw Sam and Dean sort of, if not defeat, reconcile with the entity that bitch slapped Lucifer. So the idea of stakes is just gone because that was something that was so big about season five, right? He's. Yeah. Literally nothing worked on him. Everything destroyed Lucifer. Oh, sorry, Lucifer destroyed everything. Um, mm -hmm. I've never... I don't know. I, I, I thought he became a nuisance. Uh, even though Mark was doing a really good job with the very limited material he had, uh, he certainly did a lot better with it than Rick Springfield did. Rick Springfield's interpretation yeah. of Lucifer I thought was horrible. I Yeah, I agree with that. No, the, the president <laughs> wasn't too bad. I, the guy who played the president wasn't too bad. Um, oh, but yeah, no, what? he, yeah, essentially your line, he became a oh, sexual no. <laughs> transmitted disease by the end of the show that just wouldn't go away, but they finally, finally found the cure. I hope anyways. <laughs> I just like lost connection for a moment. <laughs> oh, I, did you, did you hear me go like, oh no, <laughs> I think I did a little bit. All right. I might, sorry about that. Oh, that's My okay. Wi-Fi is trash, but oh. like, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I think Lucifer's, um, storyline was like really repetitive because like in season five he was built up to be like you know the worst thing that could possibly ever try to like destroy the world and then season 11 and 12 come along and especially like with that whole rick springfield thing i just it's too repetitive mm -hmm. for me to like enjoy i think mark pellegrino did like a great job with what he had i'll agree with you there because I, I like his acting i think he always does a really good he's like the og lucifer oh yeah so. no he's it's a trademark character for him mm -hmm. yeah i don't i i i've i feel i've always been upset with that and as much as uh, as I like the character, when he was finally destroyed in season fourteen, I I, I was very happy for that because mm -hmm. like no, please no more, no more of this garbage, please. Yeah, I, was that that was fourteen? Was it fourteen or was, was it thirteen? I, I thought that was the end of thirteen because Dean gets possessed. Yeah, because then the whole oh yeah. the whole Michael thing. <sighs> but when they get see, I liked having. Like the OG Michael back, that was cool. Yeah. But the the whole alter uh, eh, I can't English well. The whole alternative universe Michael thing kind of I I didn't really vibe with it. I mean, it was cool to watch, and it was like I guess it was like a good 
like plot line for like something because they obviously they have to come up with something right but they could have done a little bit better like I feel like instead of having the whole alternative universe Michael come and pull that bullshit with Dean they could have just bought back the original Michael at that point because like we see now that he's not like a giant threat I mean he's still like a threat kind of but like He's unknown, yeah. which is interesting. I, I like that there's something that is not predictable so far <laughs> this season. Is that yeah, like yeah. that was? Yeah, he's just like yeah. We we figured out ourselves and we're gonna take care of ourselves. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I guess you want to do the the next question there. Yeah, sure. So let's scroll down. Uh, this question is from Robana. Ro- Robana. I always I say Robana say or so Rob. Robana. I'm bad at. Talking, oh, it's so, so same. I'm I very very bad at uh, at uh, pronouncing as well. <laughs> I felt that. All right. So, question for both of you: If you were to write, direct, or produce an episode of Supernatural, what would it look like or be about? I'd take one for the team and make Destiel go canon. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, maybe. It, it's like, I, I actually made a video a little while ago where I like talked about Destiel for 20 minutes straight because it's like a pretty big topic. Well, I know it's been I mean, it's been baited for like forever, has it not? Yeah. I mean, and having that, it's been, there's a lot of things in Supernatural that suggest that like Dean isn't like fully straight. So, I mean, having one of your main characters, like two of your main characters turn out to be like in a gay relationship would be like an A plus for the gays, so like one point for me. <laughs> and then I, I just feel like having that representation would be really cool too, but also I want it to follow the plot. I don't want it to be just about that. You would want it to be more than just like a, a you'd want it to integrate into the story rather than be like a political statement yeah. or just I would want it to not be like a fan service yeah. like oh we're only doing this because everybody wants doing it, it for happen. sake of doing it yeah no that's exactly. that and that's a good thing too because as much as I am like I, I'm happy to see certain uh, aspects in film like trying to be more progressive like get out was a really good example of it Um, there have been some films in the last little while that kind of just hammer it like the the movie's gone it's now just the message like that Black Christmas remake that I saw that was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in in recent years and it's because like they even said during the production of it that they didn't have really a story they were just going for the message it's like guys it's what? you kind of have to have a story yeah that's like filmmaking 101 um (laughs) Yeah, no. That would, yeah, the, I, I would be uh, I would be interested in seeing that done. If it, it would be a bit tricky, obviously, considering how Supernatural has become more fan basey. But it seems now fans mo- know more and are better tr- better at keeping track of the lore than the actual yeah. show writers are now. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Cause like I, oof, I wow. Okay. Jade can't English part two. <laughs> I. Like, there's so many things that they, like, f- just forget about and drop. Like, the retcons, that w- which we'll probably get into later based off of, like, the questions we have. But even at, like, you know how big of a fan of Supernatural I am, but it's gotten to the point where I get annoyed at some of these goddamn retcons. Because it's like, how do you not remember the show that you wrote? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's horrible because you have to... It's, it's not that hard. Like, the fans have even set up the wiki. Like, mm-hmm. people have even said, like, this was, like, I think it was whatever happened recently, that the, the last episode that aired. They even said that, um, like, a, a simple, quick search on the fan wiki would have proven that what they just did was impossible. Yeah. Basically. Are you talking about with Darkaya? Yeah, I think it was, it was a Darkaya. I thought it was the fact that, what's her name? was hanging out with Ruby, but she hadn't fallen oh, from heaven yet. I was talking about the retcon with Kaya being alive, but no, oh, yeah, that's the Kaya thing too. The right. Kaya thing was like, uh, you, you got full on speared girl. You, <laughs> yeah. You did. Yeah. No, Cause like, I, I actually went back to watch the episode that she dies in and I, I rewatched it and I'm like, how, 
you have to be like some sort of like not human to like survive getting speared all the way through your fucking like sternum like oh, that. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. like, if they had explained maybe how she was alive, like, I I would have taken it. Oh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't have said anything about it. I would have been like, okay, she's alive for this reason, and even if it was a bad reason, okay, well, at least they gave us a reason. But they just gave us no reason. No. They're just like, oh, she's alive, we have to go save her. Yeah. Like, and, all right. And like you said, that's why you would have, um, you would make it to be a story element, like a narrative edition, mm-hmm. not just, oh, hey, we're doing this now. Which, yeah. I, I'm kind of like 50-50 of whether they're actually going to do that in this season. But I think that they're going to do it just for sake of sake of doing it. With Destio? Mm-hmm. I mean, I would hope that with all things, like, the fandom would probably go ape shit if they fucked with Destio. And I think that's like, why they've <laughs> never done it. I think that they just, yeah. like, they're like, yeah, we're... In... Which is odd because, this, what's it, um, Super or, uh, Supergirl and definitely Batwoman try to be progressive and I just I've, heard, I've worked with a few people on the set uh, of both of those shows and they say that it gets a bit cringy sometimes like when yeah. like the whole recent announcement of Ruby Rose leaving like a bunch of them I've talked to are like yeah we called this we called it happening so um, I guess if I were to do an episode this is actually an idea I had when the show was still I think this was on its third or yeah third season the only time I ever like wrote a fan fiction thingy, I didn't even finish it. Um, there was the idea of what would happen if a vampire got possessed by a demon. Oh, and, that actually sounds pretty cool. And yeah, like how would you work in the like? It's kind of like a reverse blade. Like both of them would have their powers, but neither both of their weaknesses would be canceled out. Um, mm-hmm. And it was it was like an R-rated uh, supernatural episode too. Like, it was... I think I had just seen 30 Days of Night, so that's where it came from. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that was... I, I wouldn't be able to do a story episode. Like, it's not the first thing that I could think of. I'm thinking season one, season two uh, sort of Monster of the Week ideas. Um, yeah. Because the only story that I really care about is been completed, and that's season one to five. Um, mm-hmm. For now, I don't know. Like you could do it, but you'd have to shoot at night, and that seems to not be what the show wants to do anymore. Yeah, see, the recent seasons have just gotten like brighter and brighter. Yeah, no, it's soap so. opera now. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we got the next one here from William Johnson. Uh, did you hear that there is a possibility of supernatural pass this year? Well, that's uh, actually quite possible now because of the whole COVID uh, dis- uh, thing. <laughs> Jensen has said that him and Jared won't be away too long. Might be something like a movie or special every other year, maybe. Only thing is, will it be worked around Jared's work on Walker, Texas Ranger? Now, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, if it's going to be anything like how they shot Supernatural, it'd be about mm, six to seven months of shooting. Uh, He really can't go away from that. Um, to shoot a movie, he'd have to almost be done. And I don't think Jared is in the... Just with Jared's... Uh, op, like, Jared's been very vocal about his his um, depression and his mental state. And I don't think that anyone would want to put themselves through that because he would have to be flying from Texas up to Vancouver, back and forth, all the time. Um, yeah. It wouldn't happen at the same time. So yeah, Walker, Texas Ranger show would definitely interfere with it. Also... In my opinion, I don't think... I think once this show is done, it's done. The f- the amount of views and the amount of fans who have dropped off since this season started has even surprised me. Like The numbers are the lowest the show has had in years. I think almost ever. And the amount of like division that I've seen on the Facebook page... It was like I used to be a very small minority of be- being critical of the episodes. Now it seems to it's not fifty fifty yet, but it's close. It's getting closer every day. It seems um, like when I did a, a post about uh, the show coming back in September, and everyone's like, "What's the point?" Like they, th- this obviously makes sense because of the whole crisis. But the show had already lost so much steam because of how badly they were airing the episodes beforehand. 
Um, I don't know. I think it's done. I maybe comics. I could see comics. There's like a, a shit ton of novels that I I knew there was like one or two, but apparently there's like almost twenty of them. Um, there's twenty. There's a bunch. Wait, from Supernatural. Yeah, like then. I was not aware of that. There's a wow. bunch of them. Maybe I might be exaggerating, but I know there's over ten. I'm pretty certain I've seen more than ten in a row once. I, I saw it on <laughs> one of the Supernatural fan pages I'm a part of. Um, Are you talking about like fan-made novels? No, or, like, like published novels you can get from, a, I guess, be Barnes and Nobles for you chapters for me. Well, it's Indigo oh, now. Shit. But yeah, no. I gotta read that. <laughs> well, and I, I could see comics, uh, maybe, but I, I don't see the show returning in any capacity. Even a movie, I don't see because I think they've burnt it out. Uh, I feel like, um, like, if the show was to like end where Sam and Dean like both die and everyone's dead and they come to like a good conclusion, I wouldn't really want there to be a continuation of that because I'd want the story to just be over and done with. But mm -hmm. also, if they leave it open-ended with the season, like the series finale, which I don't think they're going to because the articles that I've read, uh, I think where Andrew Dabb is like, yep, no, it's, it's done, it's over. Um... I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to a movie, cause I'd definitely watch it, obviously, if it came out, but I, like, I, yeah, with what you said about Jared working on Walker, Texas Ranger, that would definitely interfere because, you know, he'd be working in Texas, and then also, you know, the man needs to see his family, too. Exactly. So, and, like, not maybe, like, now, but maybe in, like, the future, I could see it maybe coming back for, like, a special or whatever or like a movie but it would have to be something maybe like on like related to the story but like maybe like a prologue or something like that you know what i'm talking about maybe i i like that would be cool i i would think the only thing i could think of is that they would do it like how csi ended csi ended with like a tv movie that's the only but then like that ending was actually the show finale it, um, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's they're gonna be done. Like Jared, yeah. I'm surprised Jared's moving on as quickly as he is. Um, Jensen has set himself up. Like both of the boys are set up very well. They've yeah. had very good accountants ever since the show started. Like they're millionaires, um, and that's pretty good for guys who have been on. Like in terms of people who have taken advantage of their show for monetary and <laughs> business uh, income and growth they've done exceptionally well so i i i could see them being done afterwards like i i know the cons won't end they will oh, milk yeah. those cons till the day they all die and i'll still go <laughs> maybe i'll finally have like i don't know since i haven't been able to spend money on anything uh maybe i'll have the I money the that. income to go to one of these things once all this is over <laughs> yeah i had the, like i said i had to save up for like a year to go to the last con I went to. I, I'm not going to go to the one this year because I'm moving to Florida, but what? I would l love to go again. Oh, yeah. It just kind of sucks with the whole pandemic stuff going on. Yeah, but, well, I've, I've, already, you know. yeah I've already pretty much uh, guaranteed that I'm not going to be going to Penny Arcade Expo in Seattle this year. Oh, damn. Yeah. I bought MCR tickets. You know? Oh, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. I was... Phew. The show that I bought tickets to hasn't gotten canceled yet, but there's a very big chance that it's going to. Yeah. And if I, I'm going to be a little bit destroyed if it happens, but it's fine because I, I still have the ticket. I, I know there's a few people who are were really looking forward to the Weezer Fallout Boy. Uh, Blink One Eighty Two? No. Green, Green Day. Day. Green Day. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I would have. Oh, I would die to go to that. I had a few oh friends God. who were going to that, but that got canceled. Hey, anyway, I guess we can go on to the next one. All right. <clears throat> Alex Malice asks, The last episode of Supernatural, Jack got his soul back. How do you think that will affect him? Do you think he will want to try to redeem himself? Do you think he will want to try to make up for the things he, that he did when he didn't have a soul? <laughs> I'm just gonna make a comment with the way that they the way that they ended the last episode um I think it ended with like Jack getting his soul back and then him like crying and stuff like that like oh I didn't realize 
You know what I'm talking about? I don't even know he didn't have a soul, to be honest. Like, the souls go back and forth. Like, hit j that was like reliving Castiel's powers of <laughs> mystery. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. I, I didn't I didn't know. So when I saw that, I was like, what? He, oh. Well, yeah, because uh, he had burnt his soul out back in season 14. Yeah. My, my memory is a little hazy when it comes to, like, what's happened recently because I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and rewatch everything. Oh, yeah. But, um... I'm pretty sure Jack lost his soul and then he died, cause, and then they brought him back with. Wait, no, he they brought him back to life with the, like, witchcraft stuff. Oh, was that the episode where he died at the very beginning and then they were trying yeah. to be set? Oh, that was such a bad episode. I was laughing so <laughs> hard. Jared's chopping wood and the fucking he just breaks the axe. I was like, wow. I only cried because Jared Padalecki was crying. Oh, uh, I was I was laughing so hard. I was like, man, this is some soap opera stuff here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I I think from then on he hasn't had his soul. Okay. And then when he when he died in. Uh, 14. Season 14. He went to the empty because he didn't have a soul. Mm. So when he got resurrected or brought back, um, I, I just assumed that he didn't have a soul because he went to the empty. Because when he died, he had gone to heaven that first time. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of the question, uh, I, I do think Jack is going to try to, like, redeem himself in... I don't know, like, how, but I think Sam and Dean obviously already kind of forgive him for, he only, you know. He only eviscerated their mother from the face of the earth, but he also yeah. did But he also did everyone a favor by getting rid of that terrible story angle. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh, oh, and he also killed Nick, so that was that was pretty dope. Yes, when I was like, no, 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 don't bring him back, don't bring him back. And then he was like, yes, ah, two storylines <laughs> yeah. taken care of. No, yeah. Jack's a G for that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's done but good like, for that. I feel like uh, I would think of it kind of as like when Sam didn't have a soul, he tried to like make up for like the fact that like he was kind of like an asshole, like when he didn't have a soul. But he was funny, but he didn't. He was kind of like uh, like a dick a little bit. Mm -hmm. But Jack just no i don't think jack ever had bad intentions he just didn't really know any better so i don't really think there's a lot of making up for oh yeah it's the fact that he killed mary it, it makes and, yeah. yeah yeah it makes me think of that episode where he hung out with those teenager kids and yeah. he accidentally like nearly grievously injured one by just like showing off his powers it's like man he's yeah. he's just a child and it's like, that was, I think, at the point where I was like, okay, you have to try and do something different with Jack because this kid thing is going to dry, get dry really quickly. So, like, when he got uh, possessed by his corpse, got possessed by the Balthazar or whoever the hell that guy was. Um, Balthazar. <laughs> yeah, he was great. I was like, oh, my God, yeah. this this guy actually gets to show some range other than, like, doughy-eyed baby. Yeah. Um, I, I, I personally think that... I don't know. I think that maybe there might be a little bit, but I think that his character's development can't go any further. I, with how they have him, Jack is, is like has reached his peak. The only thing he's gonna have is whenever he's gonna kill God or replace God or whatever it is. I I I don't see Jack really does like he 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 didn't become him. I lost interest in his character a while ago. So whatever they do with him, all they can do is gain my interest back in him, to be honest. That's valid. I mean, I've always liked Jack. I liked his character. I, I did, too, I, until they yeah. just, like, kept on the same track forever. Yeah, I get that. I, I just, like, I'm excited to see him, um, like, kill God, hopefully, you know, because I, I feel like then... You know, we've had, you know, as you said, doughy-eyed baby. I like that one. Um, but, you know, it, yes, he hasn't had a lot of development, but I feel like now is, like, the chance to step forward from that because we have him planning to kill God, and he could very well replace God, and that would be, like, pretty cool because it'd be, like, from little angel child baby to some definite development some definite growth you know? yeah that's like pretty cool so yeah, uh i i think like there's there's a chance for sure that it could be 
I'm not holding my breath, but maybe. Yeah. All right. All right, so now we got one here from Hollow Man. Which failed Supernatural spinoff would you like to have seen turn into a series? Uh, yeah, I, I don't really I think there's only one answer for this one. I think it's, it's Wayward Sisters. Um, I agree. Because <laughs> I, I honestly keep forgetting that whatever the crime one... I, I thought it was an ambitious it was idea. It was an ambitious idea, but the problem was... Didn't care for any of those characters. Yeah. And then... Like, if you're gonna spin off from a TV show, you have to have characters that we've already interacted with. And yeah, you can't just start like brand that. new, brand fresh. And that's what, like, yeah. uh, Wayward Sisters was gonna be a great idea. Because you had uh, Jody. Who, I still am amazed that has not been in 20 episodes of this entire show. Yeah. But yeah, Jody deserves so much more and mm -hmm. better. <laughs> and the girl who plays uh, Castiel, Andy, whatever his name, his daughter. Claire. Claire. Yeah, she was getting better. She wasn't very good at first, but she was getting a lot better with her talent. Um, they had a few other side characters. The use of Naomi. No, not Naomi. Uh... Who's the one who came back, who got speared again? Kaya. Kaya, Kaya. I think that whatever the intention was for her, for that show, that sounded cool. Kind of made me yeah. think of like an evil Power Ranger character sort of thing. But uh, I, I think that was the one. Like, I'm not surprised that it didn't because the viewership is purely, like a lot of the viewership is just for the boys. But if there was yeah. one that I would have rather seen, it would definitely have been Wayward Sisters. Yeah, I agree with you, like, wholeheartedly on that. I, I was, like, kind of sad when Wayward Sisters didn't get picked up, because I feel like if there was going to be, like... Because I know they tried with Bloodlines, and like we said before, Bloodlines it wasn't really, like, that great. I think Wayward Sisters would have been really good in, like, showing, like... you. It could have had, like, different aspects of Sam and Dean's world besides just Sam and Dean. Because oh. the show usually follows just Sam and Dean, and, like, I don't know. I, I feel like having characters that are already established, and what they built up for them, too, was, like, pretty good. So, yeah, yeah no, I, it, I agree with you. I think it was going to be a good idea. Um, it's unfortunate, because Dad doesn't have many of them, but... Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be a decent-ish. Like, I don't think it would have lasted. It definitely would not have lasted as long as Supernatural. I could have seen it maybe last yeah. in three seasons. But mm -hmm. the other thing, too, is money. Uh, that would have been an expensive yeah. show in terms of, like, comparing to Supernatural. Because Supernatural, you have two regulars and then two semi-regulars. Mm -hmm. um, like, hell, like, I, something that someone pointed out the other day is that Charlie Day is technically still alive no charlie day that's sorry charlie in the show but she's played yeah. by the the red oh i'm forgetting the actress's name felicia day felicia day there we go wrong day mm -hmm. she's alive because she came from the alternate universe but as yeah. far as you would know you don't think that she she's not in the show but she is yeah. technically speaking so is jim beaver yeah so it's like i don't know it's I, I think deserved better. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely think so. All right, Elizabeth Unlimited asked, "How will Amara and Michael slash Adam be incorporated into the rest of the season? Do you think we will see them soon or closer to the finale?" We're actually, act well, we're actually already pretty close to the finale because what is there like five? seven episodes left? Oh wow, I can't count. Yeah, there's like seven episodes left, uh, and. I mean, I'd hope so, because I feel like if, you know, you have, you're have you dealing with God, you have to deal with Amara as well, because D Dean also mentioned, I don't remember in which episode off the top of my head, but he said that, oh, well, we could, like, just clear the board, because if you kill God and you kill Amara, then there's, like, no, like, an imminent death from the entire universe, so... It's like, yeah, it's like, we don't know what might not happen. Yeah, because like, I've been saying for a while that, like, if... Because what God had said earlier in season 11 was that with, uh, if he gets killed, then, like, the universe gets all screwed up. If Amara gets killed, the universe gets all screwed up. But if they're both there, then the universe is balanced. But if they're both gone, then technically, in theory, the universe should also be in balance as well. So, I feel like 
with God having to die, that would also include Amara. And I feel like Michael could definitely aid in that. But we also have Jack, who is probably, you know, way stronger than Michael, considering we saw him basically eat the soul of the alternative world's Michael. So, I mean, I do, I do believe we'll probably see him, maybe, but I'm hoping on it, but I can't say for sure. I, I will at least hope that, I think they'll come in near the end. If I were to guess, I would say we'll see them f closer to the finale. Just I'm not basing that on storyline. I'm also basing that on Andrew Dabb's writing record. Yeah. I think I, I hope that he does not shoehorn them in in the last mm -hmm. 20 minutes like he did with season yeah. 14's finale, which I still don't understand how that episode gets so much love. Um, but I, I I hope that they do something because Amara. I, I really want to understand what happened to them because they went away reconciling everything like literal since the beginning of time disagreements uh, in season 11 and then they're just kind of petty towards each other and I kind of want to know what happened there. Um, Michael Adam I would definitely like to see more of. Yeah. I, I, I hope he comes back in at least four. Maybe I'll take three maybe of the final seven episodes but again I'm not holding my breath. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna. Tom has two here, but I guess we'll just read the first one here. Um, so this one's from right. Tom Two. The writers have said Chuck slash God, the principal antagonist of the series last season, which was a huge departure from the way season eleven ended. Chuck willing to sacrifice himself to Amara to save the world. But, yeah, just what I said. Should they have done that, or do they reason? How do they reasonably conclude the story? No goddamn clue. Sorry. Um, I'm, I, uh, I, I still don't agree with this twist. Um, you, with the the merit that they've done, they have tried to build the foundation that was never there, um, but too slow. Like you should. This is what called storytelling, story writing is. You build it before you make it. Instead, they've made it. And now they're trying to build it. Yeah, it's 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 something that is it's one of the biggest things that's nipped me ever about Supernatural because it's, it's essentially it's the largest retcon that they've ever done. Yeah. Had they actually <laughs> spent a good portion of season fourteen building up to this, like any decent writer would have done, he could have even done it badly, but at least he would have done something. I would have taken something bad rather than nothing. Yeah, I agree with you. I I liked the last episode of season fourteen where God comes in and, you know, causes, like, a mini-apocalypse. But also, I don't agree with the fact that they literally bought that in the last episode. Like, they, but, like they in the last 15 minutes! Exactly! They could have definitely built up to that and had, like, a story that actually, you know, had its, like, hind legs or something like that. Because, like I, like I said, I agree. Like, it, it's like, if you're gonna make like a big storyline for your show at least like have some development leading up to it and like i'll always you know i'll always like the show no matter what because that's just like how i am but like that that was something that kind of irked me but i did like that episode like i actually enjoyed season 14 like a lot but i i like that is like honestly one of the biggest retcons because like back in season eleven, God was like, "Hey, let's let's save the world. Let's let's uh try and uh not annihilate my sister." Or well, she was he was kind of like, "Let's annihilate my sister," and then like, "Let's not annihilate my sister." Yeah, let's let's try and reconcile. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it, there. There was development of that character, right? He realized, yeah. "Oh, hey, maybe I don't have to follow the rules. Maybe I can not even follow the rules." So, when they brought Chuck in with this, this just lunacy at the end. Uh, but I think what Dab might have been trying to do is trying to hit the same kind of spark that he got, well, that the show got when Amara was introduced. Because really, Amara was introduced in the last two minutes of season 10. Yeah. And it honestly, I'm amazed that it worked out as well as it did, but that's because you didn't know what it was. You had no idea yeah. what on earth had just been released in the entire, like, five, the first five episodes 
were just building up who the darkness was in season mm -hmm. 11. Yeah, she got all that development and all that, like, oh, who's this? What are they going to do? But then God was just like, yeah, what do you, you mean? Can't... Did you? <laughs> like, yeah, you just you... Thanos snapped. And it's like, oh, yeah. guess he's evil now. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's the problem. You can't, you, like, you couldn't do the same thing with Chuck because he's already an established character. We know who yeah. he is. You can't just all of a sudden throw this at us and be like, yeah, that's it. You guys are going to accept it, right? And they're like, no, that's not how it should be. But I did see a lot of people accept it. A lot of people were like, oh, this is the plan from the beginning. I was like, oh, go stuff yourself. This was never the plan from the beginning. It's never been the plan of how Supernatural's done its entire... Ever since season six, the show has never known whether it was going to go on for another season. It's, never, it's always come up with its next villain in the last episode. It's always done that. Ever since season six, it has done this over and over and over again. So, the idea that this whole, like, I've ranted and raved about this so many times now. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I don't know how they could reasonably conclude it anyways. I mean, on one hand, I, like, can see how, like, out of all people that you would want to be the final protagonist of your show, it would be God because he's, like, the biggest big bad of them all. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. I just, like, again, like, I wish they had built up to that, you know? Oh, Unless like, yeah, exactly. they made Jack like evil and tried to destroy the world, but I feel like people would probably complain about that when it comes to. I mean, there would probably be a good story with it, but. Well, I, I thought Jack was going to be the big bad bad by the yeah. end, but. Guess not. <laughs> no. Well, speaking of big bads, actually, that next question actually kind of looks a little fun. Yeah. So Tom One uh, says. Who was your favorite big bad, i.e. Azazel, Season 5, Lucifer, Season 6, Crowley, Amara, and who is your least favorite big bad, British Men of Letters, Season 11 to Season 14, Lucifer, Season 15, Chuck, Dick, Roman, Season 14, Michael. I gotta think about this one. Uh, <laughs> um, do you have one off the top of your head? I, I actually know both of my answers right off the bat. Um, well, the first, obviously Lucifer is the best villain. I will give Azazel credit, though, because even though he wasn't in it as much, his mis mystery um, and also his uniqueness and the actor who played him in season two, mm -hmm. I've always left a, a, a mark in my mind. I liked Amara. Amara was great, but Amara is basically Lucifer 2.0. And see, uh, Crowley bad. I always forget Crowley was a bad guy because yeah. wasn't he the main antagonist in season? Was it six or was it eight? Uh, it was the trials, so I don't think it was no. Oh well, yeah, wait. but yeah, because he but was he trying was... to shut the gates of hell, and Crowley's like, "Hey, I don't want you to do that." Yeah, but then Sam like grabbed him, and then actually, oh. you know what? If he's technically considered a big bad in season eight, then I'll go with that for my favorite because season eight is my favorite, and that whole church scene always um, makes me die a little bit inside, but like in a good way. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was a yeah, actually yeah, that is a yeah. I remember being like, wow, this is like getting really freaking dark here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, for villains, uh, for worst villains, it's it's a tie for me between season fourteen Michael, um, in terms of just an utter useless, underdeveloped, uninteresting, boring character. Um, and British Men of Letters for just coming at the absolute worst time in yeah. terms like <laughs> just if they had been before the ultimate entity of the universe sure not right after their their threat level was absolutely nil so you had yeah. one where completely wrong placement and then you had another one that was just boring so really I would actually say Michael is the worst michael is the worst villain they've ever had because even jensen ackles was just he was boring he was literally just dean but with us like weirder outfits <laughs> I, I don't know jensen's never been able to do a good villain in my opinion he's 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 done okay but jared's kicked his ass every time as a villain oh yeah no jared uh, like I said before, Mark Pellegrino is like the best Lucifer, but like hands down, second place goes to Jared when it comes. Oh, to Oh, like Lucifer. the end episode where he was oh, yeah, Lucifer, yeah. and then when he became Lucifer and see mm -hmm. the, in the, the the original series finale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for my least favorite big bad, 
I don't really know. <laughs> uh, Dick Roman's on that list, so I mean, I never really liked Dick Roman. The Leviathan plot was like kind of interesting. It was a cool but, joke. It was a good joke. I, I'm surprised at how I, I did not get tired of dick jokes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, then it can't really be my least favorite, because I did like the dick jokes, and, I, and and it did have at least some sort of a plot. So yeah. I, I guess my answer is I can't think of my least favorite Big Bad. <laughs> well, it's not too bad. Yeah, I, I, I like what you're going, like, I like a season, yeah, if we are correct, season 8 Crowley, yeah, it was cool to see a friend turn into a villain. Yeah. Which is why I thought they were going to do with Jack, but... Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I miss season 8. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it. Once I eventually get past season 5 and 6, I'll be entering territory I haven't er entered since the they premiered. I've never rewatched season 7, 8, or 10. Oh, wow. I've yeah. I've rewatched the show, like, a lot. I just, I mean, recently I haven't because, you know, I've been working and all that stuff. But whenever I rewatch, my go-to is, like, season 7 and 8 and 9. Because like I just walk like watching them in in like concession, if that, oh, yeah. I think that's the right word. Like everyone likes to shit on season six and seven, but like. I oh don't know. no, I I I think I've even said like in the last few years like hey season six season seven I'm sorry I was so mean to you, yeah. because you're no longer the worst. <laughs> like because at least like in season six they had like the soulless plot or was that. Yeah. yeah, Sola Sam. Sola Sam was pretty yeah. funny. Sola Sam was good. And because, like, that actually made sense because, you know, Sam got out of hell. And then season seven was just kind of like an add on to that because Sam, like, got his soul back and he was all, like, freaked out and, like, screwed up because of that. And then and the, so, and the, the, the shield on yeah. his head, on his mind, too. And even the last episode of season six was written by Eric Kripke. Yeah. Because the cure, what's it, uh,. The Forgotten Case of Sam. I remember it had a funny name. The last episode of season six? Yeah, the uh, curious... Oh, I thought it, it was, was based... The Sam who didn't who knew too little? The, the Sam Winchester oh, knew too little? Oh, the man who knew too much. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. Uh, I can look it up. Hold on. I oh. got Google for a reason. <laughs> uh, I think it was... The Man Who Knew Too Much. Yeah, that was that's what it was yeah. called. But oh, yeah, no, that's that a, was... It's a, that's a good play on words for. No, no, <laughs> it's a it's a based off of a good spy movie. Um, oh, I don't right, get so, a lot of pop culture references. Oh, I, I only I only know it because I watched the Bill Murray movie, The Man Who Knew Too Little, ah. and I realized that was a parody of The Man Who Knew Too Much. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. The next one here is Octu Senpai. Have you watched the theory by Ravenshore? Who is he really? How plausible? How is it plausible? Oh crap! I didn't actually watch this. Did you? No. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so maybe we will. I doubt Eric intended Chuck to be the way he is now. Sorry, uh, we'll have to watch this video. Maybe we can do a separate video about this, but sorry, we, we forgot to watch this yeah. video. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think Eric intended Chuck to be this way. I can answer that part of the question. Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning of um, when God was like when we didn't i think obviously i feel like i think even eric kripke and uh rob benedict said that um eric kripke always meant for chuck to be god because i'm pretty sure he really? said that to him yeah I, I was at a con and i think he mentioned it or who said that sorry rob benedict he uh, the actor who plays chuck oh really um, yeah so eric kripke had always intended he told rob benedict like your god your character's god but I don't think Eric Kripke's intentions for Chuck were to be bad. No, clearly with not how the fifth episode ended. Not at all. Because mm -hmm. the, the idea that he even says, like, cause that's the, isn't that the whole point? <laughs> and then he like, yeah, no, that was never the point. So I don't know. I, I'll have to watch this video. We should do like a talk a bit about this one. But apologies that we didn't, weren't able to watch this one yet. Sorry, Otaku Senpai. <laughs> I think he's got another question, so we will answer one later. All right. But this, oh, this one's, oh, Jesus, this one's huge. Uh, do I gotta read this one? Oh, God. Um, if, right. if you want, I can. Um, could y'all discuss retcons that bother you the most, oh, uh, boy. Gabriel? <laughs> um, also, I know 
the show has done almost everything, but is there anything Supernatural hasn't touched on, poorly depicted, or has given enough attention to y'all wish to see, including crossovers, lore, episode style? What is your fave? Whoa, okay. Those are, uh, it's like eight questions. Yeah, I'm going to say here. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite, least favorite, or most memorable episodes? Uh, if someone who has never watched the show before asked you, okay, hang on, all right, let's let's do this, this retcon first. Let's okay. retcon. Um, mine is Gabriel, uh, aside from Chuck. The Chuck one is just the biggest pile of bullshit, in my opinion, but the Gabriel one... I guess it'd be a tie between the two of those because both of those completely contradict the last episodes they were in and the last moments of what they did. Mm -hmm. I literally took a giant doo-doo on what their final action was. So I, I would say those two retcons have bothered me the most because... Like, the Gabriel one just... I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That's one of the best deaths in the whole show. And you just doo-dooed all over it. <laughs> I'll have to happily disagree with you about Gabriel. I think we've discussed this before, actually, that... Um, I enjoyed having Gabriel back, because he's one of my favorite characters. Besides oh, like he's Sam. a fantastic yeah. character. And, like, but I can definitely see where the blatant fan service is with it. I'm glad he came back, and I'm, like, I can definitely tell, like, that's a fucking retcon, and, like, that's wrong. And if they are gonna bring him back, they should have made it true to his story. Um, and then also, they shouldn't have just killed him. Again! Yeah, no, the, the thing that irked me the most about that was, like, fine, you bought him back with, you know, the retcon, which, like, I, in my mind, wasn't, like, it, it didn't seem that bad, because him faking his death wasn't something that is new to us. Mm -hmm. But it was seven years later. Well, yeah, no, seven years later, yeah. But because <laughs> also God had said something when, uh, when in season eleven he was like, "Oh yeah, Gabriel's dead," and it's like, "If you're God, you should have known that." So it's like they like cemented it further, and then mm -hmm. they went back on it, you know? Yeah. But like, I I could have gotten over that if they hadn't killed him in Exodus like that, because it's just like kind of tragic for his character because he he dies for something that's like you know important and then he comes back gets revenge whatever and then dies again <laughs> like oh, exactly. in almost the same way killed by one of his brothers so it, it like i get it i think the retcons that bother me the most are probably the i would probably mention the the ones that happened recently with Kaya and with um, A and L and Ruby, because oh yeah, just like the you last, said before, yeah. yeah, like in a quick Google search could have explained how you know that would not have worked because A and L came back when the angels fell, and mm -hmm. Ruby died before. Uh, like, right when Lucifer was let out of the, um, cage. So that, like, makes absolutely no fucking sense. No, exactly. So, and, like, when I was watching that, I'm like, yes, I love seeing fucking, uh, Gen Genevieve and Daniil on screen together. Like, I, I liked, I liked that. That was fun. But also, like... <laughs> it made no sense. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> as much as I, I'll try to, like, push aside the, you know the ridiculousness of that and the fact that they're writing things that technically shouldn't be happening on their show mm -hmm. like i don't know i just wish that like they actually you know watched their own show <laughs> yeah exactly but like right. yeah so that, that's no. it <laughs> no I, I get you there um, or uh, maybe we'll just bang off these ones here these other questions what is your favorite least favorite memorable episodes uh Crossroad Blues, um, What Is and What Should Never Be, Swan Song, Hammer of the Gods, like I'm yeah. just gonna, uh, Mystery Spot, obviously. Mm -hmm. My favorite episodes of Random One, it's Season 8, Episode 21, but I'd also bring up Season 8, Episode 23, because of the whole church stuff, that, mm -hmm. the trials, that yep. always stuck with me. Um, 
most least most. least favorite episodes least favorite uh season seven time for a wedding i fucking hate that episode i i i, I don't remember this episode <laughs> it's I, the I episode got it. where becky I I, <laughs> I I i remember the concept of it but i don't remember like hating it so much i don't, I don't even like again this is like i just hate it how long because, ago was that like, that was a while ago the whole reason why i hate it so much is because becky kidnapped sam and like it's just like kind of gross like this is really cringy it just rubs me the wrong way i don't like it <laughs> but like that's uh, the only episode of supernatural that like i hate with a passion like I, I can sit through all the bullshit and fuckery that they throw at us and the retcons and the missing their own details that they put in but mm -hmm. that episode i will never forgive <laughs> oh. oh um baby too ba oh, uh, baby say, was ba good I like baby's that. great one Bad episodes, a lot of the ones from the recent seasons, uh, the one where they killed Hitler, because I thought that was just, like, such a waste. Um, uh, there's not, there's one that I haven't come across that's really crappy in my reruns so far, so I can't think of anything else. Mm -hmm. um, if someone who has never watched a show asked you before they should watch it, w would you review the series as a whole? Oh, what would you be your disclaimers? I would tell them just to watch Cross Crossroad Blues. I would from tell season them to watch two. the entire thing. I, I've had oh, people oh, ask me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I would, uh, like, I think I've said watch maybe, like, certain episodes of season one and then start watching it in full from season two. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot, like, I think when I was doing my reruns of, of season one, the amount of times where the previously on was the exact same thing, yeah. the exact same clips. I think it was like ten episodes in so a I just row. Skip them. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's a lot. Um, disclaimers, I don't know. Uh, it, it's don't get it's attached to anybody. <laughs> yeah, because um, then they if, all die. <laughs> if and finally, if season fifteen hadn't, uh, fifteen hadn't started yet, how would you have written the final season? I would have had Empty be the villain because that's who I thought was going to be the villain. That's valid. I have no clue what I would have written it about destiny uh, over to win no <laughs> i'm joking but i mean i don't know who i would personally make the big bad because like in my mind i can understand god being the big bad i just don't mm -hmm. like the way they went about it so i mean i guess i would um instead of you know season 15 not starting yet i probably would have rewritten the last half of season 14 yes and just <laughs> and just let it run its course <laughs> yeah exactly i don't know i i can i really thought it was going to be the empty and then when it was like oh he's not you've built this character up as a somewhat evil entity entity so that's yeah, who the, i was the empty could have definitely been the final like protagonist of the show mm -hmm. but i have no idea what they're up to right now besides uh, when meg came back i think i cried a little bit but um <laughs> I, besides, like, that whole thing with Cass dying for a little bit, because apparently now you can die temporarily for... <laughs> and all you gotta do is just be wished hard real back. It's like some Pokemon in the movie <laughs> logic. That's so funny, though. I, um, but yeah, no, I, I get that, because, like, the Empty is, like, we don't know, like, a lot about the Empty. Exactly. That's and why I thought it was such a great build-up for a villain character. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, we're just going to take the cheap way. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. Like, that, they definitely could have made the Empty the big bad. Because I think, like, a while ago, I thought that, like, oh, Supernatural's going to end with the Empty, trying to mm -hmm. kill everybody. This is literally, like, like, erase everything from existence, turn it all into nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I also would hire Eugene, whoever that writer is, the one who keeps on doing these terrible rat comments about fired her. Yeah, what's yeah. her name? She's I think she's Eugene a singer's Ross. wife at a fired her ass. Yeah. <laughs> also what a guy got. Alright. Huh, do you yeah, if Next you want her. question is from Giovanni Giovanni. There are five questions that he asked us. Let's let's try and do these like so, bang 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 bang. What are your top three one off characters? I don't know if that necessarily means like characters that have only been in like one episode or not, but um I'm gonna um, go with Andy Gallagher. He is pretty Oh cool. yeah, Andy Gallagher is a good one. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Um what else? Uh I, I like Madsen from Heart. I yeah, I like that too. Um the guy who Adam Rose plays just because I like Adam Rose. <laughs> I actually follow him on TikTok. Um, Who's Adam? Who Adam Rose play? plays, um, it's like the 
the Hebrew stuff that they like. That, do you remember the episode where? Oh, was, you know what I'm death. About? Uh, yeah. I think so. Oh, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Wasn't he the the abacus? I think so. I'm gonna look up what his character's name was, but um, it's the episode where it's in the episode the one you've been waiting for, and everybody hates Hitler. Uh, mm. He owns like the big like giant dude. You know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, I think so. Yeah, he like uses like he has like this book with um, what is it? He plays Aaron Bass. Uh, there we go. That was his name. Um, and he, I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it, he basically owned like this giant. Yeah, this this it was like technically like a giant that he controlled with like this tiny little book. Oh, like the, yeah. the the Jewish story thing. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, okay. I like that, uh, and I think I listed two. I can't think of a third one. Um, um, I would say the the demon that tortured Dean in us uh, in hell, and the one that they had the the tort. Alistair, yes. He was pretty. Because the guy who pl- the that dude's nose. He he was all he's his whole voice. He was like this evil Marlon Brando kind of character. Yeah. And uh, I I think he was one of the best one-off villains they ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's two. Uh, I would say Andy. Andy, I really liked Andy. I I was uh, sad that Andy got knocked off. Yeah, he was low-key savage. Oh, high. what's her name? Um. Can't remember the actress's name, but the the psychic who they met in season one and they brought her back in season Missouri. thirteen and then killed her. Mary yeah, Missouri, I liked yes. Her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Missouri yeah. Moses. No, I was. Yeah. yeah. She was good. Um, yeah. Uh, what show? You. Uh, oh wow. Okay. Wow. I can English. Buffy. Shit. <laughs> uh, I would say Buffy right right off the bat. What show you think could have crossed with Supernatural? I think Charmed, original Buffy, and Smallville. Um. I've only watched like Supernatural and like BoJack Horseman and like yeah. Umbrella Academy, so I don't think I have a good answer for this question. I I never watched Charmed. <laughs> Charmed is definitely a CW show to the point where they literally recreated it or they bro- rebooted it. Um, Buffy was the massive inspiration for this show, though. There's a lot. My girl, my uh, my fiance, watched a bunch of. Uh, she's watched Buffy several times from beginning to end, and. She has said that there's a lot of similarities between Buffy and Supernatural. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that Supernatural is more focused narratively than Buffy, but Buffy had a lot of really great character building. And I gotta I would watch say... Buffy. I've, I've been told. Season by... one's rough. Season one is rough. It's bad. Um, season two is very good, though. <laughs> All right. I'll remember All right. that if I ever have the time. All right. All right. Bi- <clears throat> biggest story opportunities? That's that is not, not... Jesse. Oh, I think they mean the Antichrist. Everyone keeps on mentioning the Antichrist kid, but I was yeah. like, you guys know he's he's on the show. It's Jack, right? It, it's Jack. Jack is this kid. Well, Instead uh, of bring. Yeah, technically, but I mean, not like technically. Well, I, I think <laughs> what what was what did I say? Instead Jesse of bringing was... instead of bringing a kid to like bringing a kid on the show to be a regular character, they just had an adult playing a kid as a regular character. But yeah, who's who's Jesse though? Jesse was the Antichrist kid from yeah. season Yeah, okay, that's that's five. what I thought it was. Yeah. But, yeah, but what's this kid from that... season 7 they're talking about? Oh, the oh. baby! Is that the one, like, th- they had the episode 3, three uh, 2 Hunters and a Baby? Where it was it was the Changeling baby? Or the, the Skinwalker baby? I think so. Yeah, that would be probably what he's talking about. Or that or I'm totally off. I think I, I mean, might be totally off. No, because season seven. six, season six was about them hunting all the monsters, like the alpha vampire and everything, and the the alpha changeling and blah blah blah. I honestly don't remember who the kid from season seven is. I'm googling it. <laughs> uh, biggest story opportunities. Um, honestly, I think the show has kind of like used them all up. That's the only, the, I can see like side characters. Like there was, there was the, the 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 gay the two gay hunters that they had. Oh yeah, that would have been like a cool. One. Yeah, are the brother and sister witch hunter team that came I into that episode think that's with the bloodlines, right? 
Or no, I... no, that was the one where there was the witch who used uh, the the old granny lady who turned people into straw or whatever it was. It was in season twelve or four, 13. Oh. Uh, the sister died, I think, and the brother went off by himself because he said he was going to try and bring his sister back or something. Mm-hmm. Just a stro- drop storyline like Dad usually does. Yeah, I, I feel uh, like they always have like a lot of story opportunities that they don't really go into with a lot of their side characters just because mm-hmm. their main focus is usually just Sam and Dean. Which is exactly. why like, if they had like the spinoff like, with Wayward Sisters, they could have given those characters like so many opportunities. Like you said, the gay couple from, uh, I don't know what season it was. I can't I remember think it, off the top I of think my it head. Was, I think it was 12 or 13. Yeah, but like th- them, they could have like came in contact with like jody and been like oh yeah we oh yeah with sam and dean and then they could yeah. have had like a storyline and like that's cool. pro that that would be cool fan service of lighter things of older episodes yeah. oh there we go biggest story opportunity making wayward sister pick up on all the stuff that was dropped yeah yeah <laughs> bringing back the bloodlines thing like just coming back into that town that would have been interesting mm-hmm do you two feel like season 15 feels like a final season? Because I don't. I don't. Um, I mean, I've, I can't, I've never really been able to picture what the last season of Supernatural would look like. Like I was It started the... <laughs> Oh, sorry, no. You keep going. Sorry, I lost track of what I was saying. But, um, <laughs> oh, I feel I, like... I... I gotta, like, go on a... Sorry, I wow, I cannot English today. Holy shit. That's all right. <laughs> um, when like I found out Supernatural was ending, I cried like a fucking baby, <laughs> and like I was, I was like, you know, sad because I was, I can never really picture Supernatural ending because everyone's like, oh, ha ha, Supernatural is the show that's never gonna end, right? Yeah, no, so, it did become a bit of an internet meme for that. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you constantly tell yourself, oh, yeah, Supernatural's never gonna end. Like, what do you mean? And then it's just like, hey, guess what? We're, we're kids. We're not gonna be on the air anymore. It's like, you hype yourself. I had, like, I hyped myself up for the last season. And I'm more hyped up for, like, the last part of the season. So like, yeah, because that's kind of how Supernatural story structures always yeah, worked, right? Yeah, because, like, the beginning of the season is, like, yeah, it's, like, all fun and games and shit. But, like, once you're, like, at the halfway point, then shit starts getting real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I thought, it, I, I thought at first that they were going, they had started off, like, you know, as much as I wasn't enjoying what they were doing, I thought that, oh, wow, like... Even though some of these things that have been brought back make no sense because they're not ghosts. Um, uh, this is not a bad idea. And then in the third episode, oh, yeah, we fixed it. I was like, what? What? Yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, 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 I agree with that. <laughs> this has not been like this. There's been like maybe four, ep- maybe, f- okay, maybe six episodes of this sh- season has mattered in my opinion so far. The rest has been... <clears throat> Like, not, like, in terms of a season, like, even, I hate to say I admit it, I, I, but I actually watched a Mojo, watch Mojo video, and it was, <laughs> it was, uh, Miss Watch Mojo, they were rating all five, all 15 seasons of Supernatural, and which ones were, like, from worst to best, and they started with 15, and people were like, well, it's not even over yet, it's like, no, honestly, they're not wrong to put it here, because it's not even, even with what's already been said, they've, they've already gotten almost 75% of the way. And it's still crap in terms of like building up for the end. Like, I agree that like the build up for the season's been kind of like because like especially with you know the whole halt in production and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it, just it's like, like completely. Not fun. Like I, no. you know, but I mean I still have hope for like the last few episodes because mm-hmm. I'm really excited oh, for them. I'm hoping so. I hope the show doesn't end badly. Like, when you were talking about when how you felt when the show w- was announcing that it was over, I, w- I had a sigh of relief. I was like, thank you. Because I don't want to see this being dragged through the mud anymore. Like, I want to see this end on a good note. Because... Like eventually down the road, four like what's it like two three years from now, this is gonna be picked up by some like someone's gonna start watching this, having never seen an entire episode before, mm-hmm. and they're gonna get to season five and be like, okay, that's pretty good. And then I'm very curious to see what they say once it gets past five. Yeah. They're gonna be like, all right, 
it's still going, but why? And then they're going to get to 11 and be like, oh, great, this is another w good way for them to end. It's still going. So that kind of reminds me of how I first started watching Supernatural, though, because uh, I, I started watching it on Netflix, and I binged watch, uh, I, I think it was... I think I started watching it when season 9 was on Netflix. It was up to season 9 and season 10 was on the air. So, when I first watched season 1 through 5, I was like, wait, there's more? Because <laughs> that felt like, you know, the big finale, the end. And then it kept going and I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, I, how I feel about season 6 and 7, I enjoyed them. So, like, for me personally, my first experience with Supernatural was, like, pretty good because I had season one through five, that arc, and then I had six, seven, and eight. And of course eight's my favorite fucking season. And then I had nine, which I, I enjoyed nine, but like, I still like eight more. But mm -hmm. I mean, I I've always liked the whole story with uh, Sam getting possessed by Gadriel because it, I mean, it's, it's like a good plot because in my mind, honestly, because it's kind of like Dean has to deal with like, okay, do I let my brother die or do I let him get possessed by an angel? And then he chooses getting possessed by an angel. Stakes. There's been his... stakes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the stakes were, while somewhat rudimentary, they were at least somewhat kind of unique from each other. And now it's just the same thing. Again, we're, we're almost an X-Men apocalypse sort of oh i actually watched x-men <laughs> oh like, like the, 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 the last one they did like uh, i don't know which x-men but i know it's my friend amanda made me sit through like a bunch of x-men movies um i watched like the first one with like it, it's a yeah it's a very weird like good great crap shit decent really good Best one being Logan, and then it just takes. Oh yeah, I watched Logan. Logan was really good. Logan's very good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, do you feel? Yeah, I would say that season fifteen has been very lacking in comparison to what it should be. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, in terms of final seasons, like someone almost made the comparison that this was like on the same level as Breaking Bad's final seasons. Like, no. I've never no. seen Breaking Bad, so I wouldn't really See, know. <laughs> Real, even though the villain of that doesn't kind of make sense of season five. Well, it doesn't make sense. It's not the strongest villain. It's still a fantastic season. Final season. Fantastic final season. Mm -hmm. um, so what's this last one here? Where do you th where do you think Supernatural would be if Eric Kierke kept going with writing it? No, he wouldn't have. He, he finished it. Yeah. No, I mean, you're right. <laughs> he would have probably ended it at season five. Because yeah, he wanted to move on to something else. Mm-hmm. And he and it, it still, in my opinion, it's the best ending the show could have ever had. Like it wasn't in the it wasn't the happiest one, but I think for a show like this, it, it couldn't have ended happy. Mind you, I kind of wonder if he had like the Sam thing, because that would have been horrible. That's a horrible thing to accept. Sam, um, yeah, no, like I honestly, when I first watched that, I was like, if he stays in this pit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die, <laughs> because that was, like, a very, like, a really, like, harsh reality. That would be, like, a really harsh, like, ending with, I mean, it would be a good ending. I, like, like, all props to Eric Kripke. That man is a legend in my eyes. And, and also, uh, in terms of, you, you know how you talk, like, some, there's a lot of people will say, like, a show ends and doesn't end well. Like, the last episode is always kind of like a, uh. That one, I can almost, I can find no flaw with that episode. Mm -hmm. Except for the very, very last shot being Jared standing on the hill. That, that's, that's the yeah. only thing that, that, like, eh. Well, because if always... they ended it with Jared standing there, and that was it, then, like, everyone would have freaked out and been like, what the fuck? Because, oh, like, yeah, he's in alive. terms of continuing, oh, yeah, you in know? terms of continuing the show, yes, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. If he had ended it just before that shot, perfect. Super sad way to end the show, but like a good ending. Like, I would have been I, emotionally I'm... destroyed. <laughs> oh, it, that's and that's what people would remember it for, well, right? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, but I, I would definitely say that it was supposed to end there. Um, all right, so let's see. Souvenir success asks, 
Just would like to hear your hopes slash predictions on what the finale might deliver, what you personally would like to see. Also, what are your favorite storylines in the series? Or um, Okay, well, the first one here, what are your hopes? I, I hope that it's not bad. I agree with that. Um, I, I hope that whatever they're building it up makes... to in the end, which I would assume would be Jack killing God at this point, I hope that they continue to build on that instead of, like throwing in some random shit with like they always do because that's like what i i like how i can picture the show ending right now i picture like a battle between god and jack and sam and dean and cass and possibly rowena and you know she's the queen of hell now yeah so. yeah she could like fucking she could fuck shit up now like she she made out i'm so glad rowena is the queen of hell because she deserves that. That, that 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 was really funny actually i was like you know what this kind of erases the, 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 the sadness of your death. Yeah. But this is... I'm okay with this because this is witty. This is funny. <laughs> no, it was um, good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like I just hope that it's... I hope that it's not bad. I hope it makes sense. That's like... I'm amazed I have to ask for that, but... <laughs> <laughs> I hope it makes sense. It's not a... It's not a freaking retcon ending. Yeah, it just... It's... it's it ends not bad i just i don't want a dexter ending i don't want um that's the one that really comes to mind first off <laughs> i just i just don't want a bad ending that does that completely contradicts the entire show mm -hmm. all right um what's your favorite storyline from the series uh i would say like i I, <laughs> I i yeah you you've got season eight mine's season three which is what i'm, I'm very excited to start reviewing that now because i got probably. I got over. I finally finished season two, and I'm slowly releasing the episode, the, the videos day by day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, season three is my favorite because one, it was shorter because of the writer strike, and two, the whole idea of trying to save Dean from a fate that's unsavable. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. I liked season three a lot, actually. Um, even considering it was short, they it, they did a great job considering they had those episodes like that. They had the season cut short. And then also, when you compare it to other shows that came that were running during the writer strike, like apparently Hero season two went just straight down the crapper after a first really good season. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I never watched Heroes, but I've just heard that it's one of the worst shows to have been affected by the writer strike. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I feel like also the the fact that 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 season has like so many little episodes kind of adds to like the urgency of like dean's situation exactly it makes that year really seem short yeah so I'm and I, m I remember counting down too because as we were getting closer and closer to the to may i was like shit that year's coming up yeah. <laughs> it, it gave gravitas to his his threat yeah like um i mean you for season eight um the trials like I remember th it was like the dog, right? It started with killing a hellhound, right? Uh, yeah, so the first trial was to kill... It was bathed in the blood of a hellhound. The second trial was to rescue an innocent soul and deliver it to Bobby. heaven. Bobby! Yeah. And then uh, the last trial was to... And that's the end of the video so far. Jade's phone ran out of storage space, but at the same time, we did not expect that it would take this long to go through these many questions but you guys have got a lot of good questions here and there's still a bunch more so we're gonna do that in a second video it was the original plan but i didn't think it would i thought it'd be like 45 minutes each but now this one um yeah we're gonna there's gonna be a lot of videos for this so stay tuned we're gonna sit down and do another video soon and uh yeah so thank you guys for your questions Hope you guys are enjoying, uh, enjoyed the, our answers for this video here. We're going to get next to, my God, this is at least another like two hours worth of talking. So we'll see. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys next time.